Hey guys, today I have an absolutely awesome video for you today where I'm using Sub Focus Punch Polyrath in RU. I think this thing was actually close to dropping to PU, but I don't, I don't know. I just really wanted to use it in RU. This has been a set since like Gen 4, and for some reason in Generation 6, it's not even on the Smog Index. The only set is the uh, Rest Talk Scald Circle Throw one. Uh, this set's definitely doper. I'm not saying that's a bad set or anything. But this set is pretty dope. Uh, basically, Alamomola and Registeel cores are pretty popular right now. And this team will kind of capitalize on that, especially with Choice Scarf, Toxic, Embor. Cho Choice Scarf, Embor also cleans up late game. In like, usual games, right? But against Registeel, Alamomola cores, Embor will pressure the Registeel into switching to Alamomola and then you toxic the Alamomola on the switch. And then Polyrath will set up subs on Alamomola and if Polyrath is behind a sub and Alamomola can't toxic it, it can do absolutely nothing to Polyrath. It'll carry Scald or Knock Off, right? As an attacking move. And neither one of those do anything to Polyrath and one of them actually gives Polyrath HP. And then Bronzong is here to check stuff like Venusaur, stuff like Verizion, stuff like Fletchender that kind of troubles Polyrath. And Blastoise is actually more used for, for Fletchender to be honest. Blastoise also gets off a, a, a pretty reliable spin, which reliable hazard removal isn't bad ever, even though my team's not super weak to hazards. I explain that. Uh, Siglyph is just kind of something I'm kind of playing around with, still kind of playing around with the last slot. If you guys have any suggestions, be sure to leave those in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoy the games. Alright, so I had all of these games live commed, and I ended up liking none of the live commentaries. So, uh, the first three games of the team are all going to be post commed and probably gonna retire the team after that because it has a winning record. Spoiler alerts. So I'm just gonna start the first game here. He leads off a Quillfish, because just gonna try to get hazards right away. Taunt me, not sure why. The only moves, uh, like Blastoise, it'll carry like Refresh or Toxic. Toxic doesn't affect Quill for it. Quillfish, and I'm not status right now, so taunting was kind of weird on his part. But he's going to start setting up the spikes and the lucky scald burn turn one is going to make me wear down this quillfish very very quickly i'm actually going to be able to spin here as he goes to verizion so the first uh three turns were completely wasted and quillfish is down by 80 percent he's actually calm mind verizion here which is interesting i guess uh might be something i have to build around sometime i've actually tried to before didn't care much for it and there, after seeing the first gyro ball damage, I thought he would knew, know that Focus Blast doesn't kill and try to switch out and save it for later. But, so I get up my Stealth Rock, don't go straight for the gyro, and he actually is content to let Verizion die, and because of that, he will get rewarded and be able to kill my Bronzong. But I have rocks up on his side of the team, so I'm going to be able to wear down Houndoom, Sneasel, and uh, Quillfish is going to be very low when it comes in. Unfortunately, I have to use Polyrath, not to its full potential here, because he does still have Fagus around and Quillfish around, which will intimidate it. I'm going to sub here on a Willow, but I'm still not going to be able to do very much because this is a Cofagrigus and I am a Polyrath. I'll go for the Waterfall, get off 30, and he'll Shadow Ball and break the sub. Here, I go for the Waterfall again just to get off more damage, and I actually get the Flinch. And on the next time, I'm actually going to substitute because Cofagrigus isn't incredibly powerful and Polyrath isn't exactly frail. So I don't think it was insane to think that maybe that was a roll and I figured it was worth it because the biggest difference would be 6% from leftovers and I actually get rewarded for that play by critting him anyway, which is um not fair to him, but whatever. Venusaur will Giga Drain this thing and he will be forced to go to Sneasel and then I will go to my own Blastoise. And Blastoise will basically uh, just win here. Uh, Walls, Sneasel, I mean Quillfish can't do anything to me offensively and I'm sure Scald would just probably straight up kill Rhyperior. Probably. Maybe not because Solid Rock but then I would just burn it and then I win anyway. 
So first game with the team, I kind of realized that Sneasel won't ever be doing much for the team, in my opinion. So I will actually switch that between game one and game two for a Sigalith, and I will get right into game two now. Game two after the Sneasel change, and you see uh, this is a team that would completely get 6-0'd by Sneasel, so that was pretty dope. <laughs> and yeah, so we'll just get started here. Uh, I just straight up lived this Fire Blast. I didn't think I would if it was Specs, or I thought I would live on like just a sliver. And I didn't see Hazard removal on his team, so I kind of go fuck it for rocks anyway. I kind of didn't think the Fire Blast would do that much. I'm going to try to save Bronzong for uh, Meloetta later anyway, but I'm probably not going to get the opportunity to just because it's so low. As I go to Venusaur, I see Dragon Tail, and he Dragon Tails me back out to Blastoise, which is kind of okay. I'm just going to take this opportunity to Toxic it, which I, I mean, I could have done two turns ago when I had switched out. Okay, here, here I make a bit of a questionable play. I'm going to substitute on the Slow King because, okay, when you see a Slow King, obviously it has Scald, obviously it has Slack Off, always. And then it had Dragon Tail. And if you have Dragon Tail, you usually want something like Thunder Wave, right? So you can spread paralysis throughout the entire, all of the opponent's team. So your Specs X Bloud, your SD um, Absol can now be faster than the things that it wouldn't be faster than before. So I was actually thinking here that maybe he doesn't even have Psy Shock, so I sub with Polyrath on a Slow King. And worst case scenario, I'm out of 25% of my health, right? So it's not even that bad. And here I'm actually gonna end up trading with his Bayonet because of Destiny Bond. And I, I just don't like Destiny Bond as a move, but I, I think that's a different topic for a different video. He's gonna go to X Cloud here, kind of go to Venusaur, and that's kind of poo poo for me. And I'm gonna have to sack Bronzong here. I was kind of hoping that wasn't two hit KO, but Boom Burst is strong as piss, so it's going to. And here, this Flare Blitz does a little less than I thought it would. Because for some reason I had a uh, banded Embor Calcs in my head from like a long time ago. And this one is Choice Scarf. As you saw at the team preview. So I'm just going to switch into Venusaur here. And I think I Sludge Bomb. Is this where I Sludge Bomb or is this where I Leap Seed? This is where I Leap Seed. Predicting a switch. And I'm going to go to my um, Siglyph predicting the Psychic type move. And I, he actually shows Relic Song. So he's the fighting type one. And here... I don't 100% um, understand what happens. I don't know if he didn't have knockoff or ice punch, if he just misclicked, but he's gonna revert back to the original form, and it's actually gonna make me faster than him. So my Sigalith actually beats the fighting type Meloetta that usually carries knockoff and ice punch. Here I'm just gonna use Blast Toys to check the Absol here. I think it's gonna SD in my face. Yeah, it SDs in my face. And Scald is a 2 hit KO. I get the lucky burn, but he's Lumberry, so fuck me, I guess. And my Blessed's gonna have to take about 80% because of that. Yeah. But I'll still 2 hit KO the ad, so it's fine. He'll go back to X Bloud here. And he's faster than me, so I have to sack something else. And then, okay. In the live commentary, I actually said I don't think Psychic. I don't think this is in the range for Psychic to kill, but I accidentally clicked on Siglyph anyway, and I end up having to sacrifice it because of that misclick, which really sucked. And Imboro will just come in and Flare Blitz, and it doesn't matter what he wants to go to here, either one is pretty good for him. He will decide to go to Dredagon, which is fine. Glare is my Venusaur. I'm gonna, yeah, this Fire Punch does next to nothing. It does way less than I thought it would. And, like, he must have no investment, no Life Orb, no Sheer Force, no nothing. I think I actually see, yeah, you don't see lefties. He could be Rocky Helmet. I don't know, I will see the last turn of the game because I do end up killing this Dredagon with a superpower from my, uh, Embor. As he dragon tails me out here. So I think his dragon tail or his um 
Let's see if he's Rocky Helmet. I know I took Rough Scan. I don't remember if I took Rocky Helmet. Yeah, he was Rocky Helmet. So I think his Dredagon and his Slowking was basically going to do the same thing. And the plan was for Specs X Plow to just sweep late game. So, interesting team design. In theory, it ended up not really working for him. But I hope he finds success on the ladder because it's a pretty cool team. X Plow's pretty cool with the Thunder Wave support. So now we go on to game three. Now this game, if I was going to upload one of these games live commed, I didn't like my li live commentary for any of them. But if I was going to upload one of them live commed, it would have been this one. Because Sub Punch Polyrath is pretty good against his team. Uh, it completely sets up on a Scavalier. Can probably set up on Scrafty, maybe. Sets up on Typhlosion if it's locked into a fire move. And if that's an SD Samurott, it'll be running SD Waterfall Aqua Jet, neither Mega Horn or Knockoff. And I set up on both variants of those with my Polyrath. So this will be pretty dope. And actually, you'll even see that Uxie doesn't have Psychic type stab. It's like Heal Bell, um, Stealth Rock knockoff u-turn so I could have even set up on that but I didn't know that team preview so I didn't oh my god those are loud that is loud okay <laughs> that scared me okay and you actually see yeah, he's normal gym fake out hit Molly, which is just disgusting it's such a bad set and I hate it so much I'm gonna have to use it one of these days so I can try to understand what makes people use this because every time I've seen it it's just kind of been bad I think I've been beaten by it very few times, which I've played a lot of RU and I've played a lot of Fake Out Normal Gym Hitmonlee. And it's more of a late game sweeper, but people tend to use it in the early game. So maybe it's just the way people are playing it. Here, okay. In the live com, I have Dazzling Gleam on this Sigilyph. And I was in the live com, I was just like, this Scrafty has no fucking idea what's about to hit it. Just watch, it's just gonna be amazing. And then he lives, and I'm really upset. And for some reason, he's going to save this 8% Scrafty and go into a Scavalier. And okay, I have Heat Wave on this Sigilyph. <laughs> so during the live com, I was like, this uh, Scavalier has no fucking idea what's about to hit him. And then he's just going to casually live the Heat Wave because I had knock off, um... He had knocked off my Life Orb, so I was significantly less powerful. I'll go to Polyrath here, set up a completely free sub on this uh, Scavalier and then knock it out with a quick waterfall and here he's gonna make a play that doesn't make sense I think it must have been a misclick or just misunderstanding of the game he goes for heal bell I think he thought his scrafty was burnt instead of his um escavalier because I thought it was burnt at the time too which oopsie daisies in, in the live com and here's where I'm kinda realizing either he doesn't have anything to hit me or He's just kind of toying with me and really going for a long game here with the Stealth Rock and stuff. But then he reveals U-Turn and shows me his full move set, sacks off the Scrafty. As he goes to Typhlosion, I'm thinking he'll go for the HP Grass, I believe is what he, yeah, HP Grass. I was thinking it might have been HP Electric for um, Mantine, but uh yeah, in RU, like that was something that they did back in NU. That's not really something they do in RU. And actually, uh, they would run Wild Charge for Mantine because Mantine was so especially bulky that HP Electric wouldn't even do much. So here, luckily, this Oopsie is going to kill me and not be dead, which means my Polyrath can come back in and set up another completely free sub. Right, yeah. As he goes to Samurai, and I mean, the Uzi's dead to rocks now, so he should have knocked off while he could and got rid of my leftovers, but misplays happen sometimes. We we'll go for the HP something, I'm not sure it was neutral, which is really weird. Uh, what hidden power would they carry? Let me think. They carry hidden power fire, which I would resist. They'd carry hidden power grass. No, they wouldn't carry hidden power grass because they just have grass knot that they can use. What hidden power would that be? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. 
But I'm gonna go for the focus punch here. The first focus punch didn't kill, which is very anticlimactic. Very, very upsetting. Here, I completely forget how focus punch works, and I go for it uh, unprotected. I should have gone for the sub that turn, so I would be able to kill this with a focus punch. I was actually really excited to maybe get a focus punch kill, and in the end, it's still not going to happen. That was so upsetting. <laughs> but Polyrath did a ton of work that game. Absolutely awesome. And now the team is 3-0 with a sub-punch Polyrath, and I'm going to retire it forever. So, uh, this team completely undefeated. Pacebin will be in the description. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'm out. Bye, Zs.